During the past 17 years, Irishman Jim Kavanagh has led almost 40 convoys of aid from Ireland to the institutions and orphanages of Belarus. The work we've done so far probably started about six weeks ago, six to seven weeks ago. A great amount of people were here today um, lending a hand to Lola. People have to be off work and be available and they always are when you need them. I was talking about sending out this convoy in April 95 and that they needed anybody that would volunteer or help as a driver or a truck or whatever, they'd be delighted to hear from anybody. And I, I remember I was in the kitchen listening to it and I turned to Penny and I said, that's what I'm going to do. This is a message saying to the children that they are not forgotten, that they are not abandoned. These are the children who are the most fragile, the most vulnerable. They come from different places, different backgrounds, some from a mental asylum, some from orphanages, some from very deprived and very poor conditions, living in abject poverty. And this is the people of Ireland sending a warm, clear message to them of solidarity. And most of all, I think I put probably the most enabling gift of all to me is the gift of hope. You don't get into the frustration of it. What you do is, you have them for a period of time here. They're only here for four weeks. You do the very best you can during that four weeks. You make sure they're well fed, they're well looked after. And you know, they always went back a lot healthier than they then than they'd come in. Jim Jim does the obviously drives the trucks back and forth for, with humanitarian aid. He's been He's been ever present since as long as I've been here. Like it's just like an engine can constantly, constantly on the go, all the time. Basically, it never never stops. He has to be told to stop. But. It's October and we're on our third trip to Belarus with Jim as he leads a small aid convoy comprising of two trucks and a dental care ambulance that's destined for the children of Vesnova Orphanage. The trip from Ireland takes us a week to complete as we drive over 3,000 kilometres across Europe and see eight countries. Any continental journey is part of, of what you do. You come to the port, we're in the port of Dover now, and we are in the queue of trucks to be loaded in approximately one hour's time. And that's just the way it is. It's part and parcel of, of what we do and how it's done. You certainly need patience um, because there's nowhere else to go and there's nothing else to do and you just wait.
Even after 17 years, the thought of the Belarusian border crossing can still cause Jim to worry. It's only 20 minutes up to the border here now, and after that, if you don't have things right, there's no way of making them right. There's always um, a new rule or a new law brought in from the last time you were here, and things can change, and then you have to go chasing or looking or worrying about uh, whatever might be or might have changed. And, and we hope that we have everything right on the paperwork and that there are no discrepancies or mistakes or call it what you like. But only this morning, during a last-minute inspection of the paperwork, Jim found a discrepancy in the value of the items listed on the second truck. He's had to make the correction by hand to amend the mistake. He knows any alteration is looked on with suspicion by police, but undervaluing the aid can lead to stiff fines and even a prison sentence, so in order for the aid to get through, it's a risk he decides to take. Everything seemingly is, is itemised so thoroughly that he must know what it is, and then he gets the proper code and he writes that down on a piece of paper. The processing building is like something from a science fiction movie, and for us today, with our amended paperwork, so much depends on what happens inside. Thousands of trucks cross this border every day. In an attempt to crack down on people trafficking and goods smuggling, security is tighter here than it has ever been. So we have to conceal our camera in order to keep filming. It's not long before we're spotted and have to cease filming altogether. After a gruelling 18 hours of processing, we are finally cleared and all three vehicles are permitted to enter Belarus. It was a very long day. We didn't leave the Belarusian side of the customs until approximately half past one this morning. Uh, for any truck to be at the border that length of time is a long, long time. But we're here now, uh, ready to roll. The value that was on the paperwork for the second truck was 10,000 less than the correct addition. Uh, we discovered it first uh, and we wrote it in pencil what the correct figure was. But when you make changes on the customs paper, it, it will certainly lead to uh, they being extra careful and extra particular about doing uh, the declaration so that they would probably add it up ten times. Are you ready to go? Are you, wait you all your way to beat me? No, no, we're, we're all ready. Oh, you have the copper? Oh, well, I can have a gun lock. Belarus is a beautiful country with vast agricultural land which stretches as far as the eye can see. But its seemingly untouched aesthetic beauty hides the grim reality of what lies beneath the soil. Even now, 25 years after Chernobyl, the land is still contaminated. by the exclusion zone is that they moved the people out of the area. Uh, nobody was allowed to live there. No crops or anything like that was, was grown. Over the years, definitely, uh, this area here was uh, a fairly... We wouldn't spend long down here at the time, any one time. That was just uh, our, our information and, and what we were being told. There are many countries that have alcohol problems, uh, but they don't seem to have the amount of birth defects uh, that is happening here. 
and there has to be another reason and you know you cannot help but think that the the, the accident contributed um, and is still contributing in a big way towards what has happened I mean the thyroid cancer that affected a huge amount of people just doesn't happen in other countries so uh, there definitely has to be a link Our first port of call once across the border is Vesnova Orphanage. The Irish have huge ties with the children of this place, many of whom visit Ireland during Christmas and the summer months. As soon as word spreads that Jim Kavanagh is in Vesnova, there's excitement in the air. And some of the older children who have grown up here make their way to the truck to see him. Under the eagle eye of the state's customs officer, we unload the aid that's destined for the orphanage. It remains sealed in Vesnova's storehouse for a period of up to two months while paperwork is processed and it's cleared by customs. Only then can any of it be used legally. Already hard at work inside Vesnova are the Tralee Dental Team, whom we accompanied from Ireland. There are mixed emotions in the corridor as the children wait to be seen by the phenomenon that is the dentist.
group of young men, lovingly known as the Sashes, whom have all grown up at Vesnova, have touched the hearts of the Irish volunteers so much that huge efforts were made to build houses for them here on site at Vesnova. Vasily. Alia. Lava. Vanya. Sasha. 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 those of whom can help run the farm and help the maintenance men with their primitive machinery. Their usefulness secures their place here. One of the young men, nicknamed Sasha Blonde, liaises between the Irish volunteers and the Belarusians as an interpreter. He and Jim have a strong friendship. Are you okay or...? Oh, yes, I'm fine. Never better. Never better? <laughs> I called here, it's like everything out here, I, I was here before they started doing any work at all. Like it was no. just a very old place, uh, yeah. terrible really. Yeah. Terrible. And you know, you, you just know he was here and um, the same with the rest of the, the, the guys that are around now, they were tiny. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he's very full, he's still miss, missing. Um, Everything. See, see, sing a song or so, something like that. So it's very fun. Very, my, my very, very best, best friend, best friend. But when he, he's not coming over, I'm so sad about it. How does that make you feel, Jim? Are very humble, really. That someone out here would would say something like that. I'm delighted to hear it. Jay, you nearly make me cry. No, you do. How's it going now? <laughs> Typical Irish man. Before I do. Oh, well, now you don't hear that too often. See, so you don't. I'll be back. Now I go to the work. One of the many wonderful things the Irish have made possible was the building of a workshop as a creative outlet for the older children. This is the, the work workshop. They are given lessons three days a week in woodwork and in craft. Irrespective of disability, everyone does something and has a particular talent. The hope is that in the future the boys can sell their wares at a local market. It will give them life skills and introduce them to a society that until now they have been hidden from. Children, all of the children do these things. Okay. Toys. Yeah. Disabled children. Sasha Goldayo, who is on a wheelchair, he shows. Disabled children. Paint those toys. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Along with his love for the woodwork class, Sasha took it upon himself to write a book about his life. It's soon to be published. 
Thanks to the charity, he has hope for the future and wants to turn his hand to many other things, including photography. It's, I said, when, when it's, I will, uh, um, I said, 18, I, I just, just coming over and I said, I just please join something to me. I don't like go to another, another place. Ever present in the back of the boys' minds is the other place called Saltanovka. In Belarus, when children in orphanages reach 18, if they have a disability of any kind or are simply seen as difficult, there is nowhere for them to go, so they are sent to an adult mental asylum. Saltanovka houses some 200 men and women, ranging in age from 18 to 96. Once here, you leave your childhood behind. Every day, whatever the weather, the residents are sent out into the yard for two hours. Some pace aimlessly, Many sit and rock or cry. Nothing to do and hopeless. Irish builders have made huge contributions to building projects at institutions all over Belarus. This work has changed thousands of lives. For the past week, Noel Kennedy and builders from all over Ireland have been at Saltanovka. Time is our biggest enemy on a, on, a, on a project because we've got 12 to 14 days to get a lot of work done and everything has to be there ready. If we tie the floor, we need to be able to walk on it in two hours time. You know? Well, what we would have seen would have been typical of most, most institutions in Belarus. Basically, structurally sound buildings, but not maintained because of lack of finance basically or lack of budget and we would come in there would be broken leaking drafty windows the old timber windows um, old plaster walls you know ancient ancient construction basically um, ceilings would be falling down or leaking or just general disrepair fiona stanley a member of the clonmel branch of the charity has been involved since back in those early days with jim on the first convoy like to be very witty fellas on a convoy Absolutely. as well. Yeah. However we manage to find them, yeah. Yeah. they would always be there. And I mean, like when you set out in the morning, you were looking at a six-hour trip, and you, 
you'd say to yourself, God, six hours before we, we stop or whatever. But the crack that used to go on on the, the CBs was just, oh, it was brilliant. It, it was, kept everybody going. You, you, you know? couldn't create it. It just happened on, on the just, spur of the moment. Yeah, and then yeah. to build up and... Yeah, be some some fun. Some and it just it would it made the, the journey the it, then like, so much <laughs> shorter, didn't it? <laughs> Filled, basically. Bad, no equipment, you know, just yeah. not the proper facilities for the, the patients. Like, you know... Horrible. It was horrible. For any kind of care. Everything. For any kind of care. Yeah, exactly. And if you have better you facilities, know. the so carers will, will care Absolutely. better. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what happened in Belsnova. Yeah. yeah. In the orphanage there. Yeah. It's it a was, new building. It was old and it was like something you'd see 50 years ago. But the payoff basically is, is job satisfaction. There's nothing like it. You, 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 wouldn't, you, you wouldn't do it for the money. It's just pure job satisfaction. You come into a place, it's falling down, the kids are just walking around with the clothes on their back basically like and, you put, and you walk away two weeks later with a wing of a, an institution totally refurbished by 20, 30, 40 builders. There's just nothing like it. <laughs> We get to know all the people and we build up a relationship, with, especially with the, the director of the institution that we're working in. It gets a lot easier as time goes on. Like, you know, the first week we came here, she just didn't want to do anything for us because she, did, she, just did, she didn't know us and she didn't know what we were about. In the, when, we came, when you'd go to a, to Beznova first uh, or, or here in, in this institution, yeah. the, the attitude was only, they were only barely tolerated. Exactly. And now it's, yeah. The director's yeah, attitude is yeah. totally different. Yeah. It's a hello and yeah. you're welcome. And After lengthy negotiations were granted an interview with Valentina, the director of Saltanovka. Surprisingly, she then offers to bring us on a tour of the entire compound. The facilities here are dire, much work still needs to be done. I suppose it's a question of trust and she totally understands what we're doing and why we're doing it. Uh, like her, her, her willingness to, to talk and uh, bring us on a tour was, to me, was a, a shock. Like many Belarusians, Valentina is a product of the system. While she has a heart, she has to play by the rules and so there will always be a certain level of distance between her and the residents. As with Ireland during the 1950s, the most harrowing aspect of Saltanovka is that many of the residents are simply forgotten and have nothing to live for. 
regardless of age, they are locked away and sedated in order to keep them quiet. The obvious presence of the morgue and the graveyard are a constant reminder that death is the only way out. On our tour with Valentina, I asked if we could photograph some of the residents. While she agreed, she warned me that they would be either unresponsive or physically aggressive. but they're delighted with the attention and queue up to have their photos taken. chance to have some sort of a family or home life you know in a, in a proper environment you know as opposed to growing up in an institution and all the, all the things that that brings with it you know Any home of hope provides a house, um, eight to ten children taken out of, of care. Um, every one of the families that are in these homes of hope are extremely kind to the children. Any orphanage you go to, the children, no matter how well they're cared for, and they are being cared for better and better in the orphanages, 
nevertheless it is an institution and there's no one-to-one -one bonding or, or you know a hug or whatever from the people there it's their job and they're doing it to the best of their ability but when they're brought into a house of maybe eight or seven or eight people it just becomes a natural family. The Homes of Hope programme is one of the most successful aspects of the charity's work, taking up to 10 children at a time out of an orphanage and placing them with a mother and father in a loving home. Woke up this morning and I feel okay. Looked out the window, was a sunny day. The snow's been falling all night long, so I'm going out sliding when I've done this song. So I'm going to put my socks on, going to put my shirt on. Hey, hey. Woke up this morning and I feel okay. Looked out the window, was a sunny day. The snow's, snow's been, been falling, falling all night long, so, so I'm going out sliding. sliding. Today is the opening of the Home of Hope that Fiona Stanley's group and Clonmel have funded. It's a proud day for everyone involved, most especially the newly formed Yaroshenko family. Children International Project has provided the bricks and the mortar to build this home. But the Yaroshenkos have provided the love, and that is the most important thing. At the core of the Zitkovici Home of Hope are the Casey family back in Clonmel. For many years they have fostered Luda, Zina and Natalia, along with their older brothers and sisters during summer and Christmas visits to Ireland. You can't leave that into your head, what happens when, you, when they go back. You just look, we'll do the best we can. Sometimes we manage to get people to go down. I was out a few times, I went down to visit them when I was out. That's all you can do. As, as Johnny said, we're going this since 1996, and we always felt when they went back, you know, we were not doing anything. What are we doing to help them? You know, it's we couldn't, and it was so frustrating. But now this is incredible because their lives are better because of Clonmel and because of the people of Clonmel who have, you know, so generously <coughs> donated their money to 
entrusted us like to, to um, provide a home for those children and, and it is amazing like that you can actually see what has happened and how their life has improved and how it has changed because of people's generosity, you know, it's fantastic. We knew when they were in the house, when, the, when we knew that they were actually um, going in to the Home of Hope and, and like we had seen some of the, the, the work, there are other Homes of Hope and we had seen the kind of standard that the project was aspiring to and like, you know, obviously we don't know the family that they were going but you always hope that it's going to be good and I think there was that sense, sense when they got in because as Anne said, prior to that, you know, all you were ever doing was hoping that by having the interaction with some kind of normality for a month or two months of the year as it is that the others would get something out of that. And I, I think maybe they did. I suppose um, the nicest um, reaction I, I heard was um, Johnny rang me when they had moved into the house and um, Johnny said, well, the girls are in. And Luda sent a text to Johnny and said, Johnny, it's like being at home in Clonmel. It's one of the nicest, the nicest projects that you could be involved with, I think. Where I'm involved since 1993 with, with the Chernobyl project, but this has really been the icing on the cake. Three words. Three words of English, yeah. And she's what learning are German they? in school. What are, what are the three words? Yeah, all. It's all food. Bananas. Food. Bananas. Oranges. oranges. <laughs> Yogurt. <laughs> Apple. Four words. She loves fruit. I suppose it, it is difficult to relay exactly um, the state of a place and no matter how well or how much you describe it. Like a, we're at it long enough to know that people will give you stuff. It's, it's a question of convincing them that there is a need and there still is a need. Uh, much Chernobyl is, is featured or out there in the media. Uh, nevertheless, it's still very difficult to make people uh, understand how bad the situation is and there is still a, a, a need out here. The, the ideal future for a place like Saltanovka would be to close it down. We did at home is getting back into the community but it's, I, I mean look, if you look around the place there's a lot of people here that with the right support in the community wouldn't wouldn't have to be here at all you know and that, that's what I'd like to see but I don't think it, it, it will ever happen you know. Ever? I don't think so. No. I think the, the, the brilliant idea too is bringing the children to Ireland for their rest and recuperation because, you know, like the slogan says, it, it cleanses their immune system for up to two years, so, you know, without even doing anything, just taking them out of Belarus and bringing them over to Ireland for a holiday with family for one month cleanses their immune system for up to two years. volunteers working with Chernobyl Children International in Ireland alone. These are only some of those volunteers, but combined, they have changed generations of lives forever and they offer hope where once there was none. I'm 
Summer days grow longer, but life gets shorter. A heart starts growing cold if you remain alone. You gotta take a chance, you gotta get up and dance. You know the song. So open your borders and let me in. No need for martyrs or patriots. Open 